All right. Well, thank you all for being here today. Uh, my name is Megan Blakehorst. I'm one of the Dabble, Dabble organizers. Uh, with me today is Sarah Akawa. Uh, she's on here um, and she's going to be taking notes. Uh, she is going to be um, assisting with uh, looking at the questions and, um, you know, just is one of our awesome organizers and we're really excited. Um, we have Adelia with us also here today and she is uh, a staff member at Dane Arts. Um, I want to give a really quick Zoom tutorial uh, for those of you, uh, before we introduce Rachel here, for those of you that are new, at the bottom of your screen, if you hover around near the bottom of your screen, you have a number of options. Right now you're muted and that will maintain that way. Um, and that's on the bottom left. Next to that is your video. So if you want to turn that off, that's where you would manage that. Um, and if you kind of move your uh, cursor over to the right, in the middle, there's that's where the chat box is. So if you uh, have a comment or a burning question, pop it in there and we'll be keeping an eye on that um, throughout, the, um, throughout the workshop. And at the very end, we will share this recording with you and we will also uh, share a number of other resources that Rachel has shared with us ahead of time and that she'll be talking about. So you'll be able to access those. Um, this workshop tonight is part of our Dabble Workshop Wednesday series. It is produced by Dane Arts and uh, the Dane Arts by Local Art Market. We're not doing markets so much right now, but we're helping you market yourself as an artist. So we're really excited that you are with us. And so without further ado, I don't wanna waste time just chit chatting here. I wanna get right to the nitty gritty because Rachel is with us. Um, with us today, we have Rachel Werner. She is the Content Marketing Specialist at Taliesin Preservation. She's a guest faculty this year at Hugo House and the Loft Literary, Liter uh, Literary Center. Uh, she is an accomplished social media and just an amazing person, and we're super happy to have her with, her, with us. So um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Rachel Werner and let her give a little bit more about herself and her background. Right, Rachel, welcome. Hi guys, I'm excited to be here tonight. Uh, I'm gonna actually try and drive in as soon as possible. Questions. Oh, oh, my okay, sorry. <laughs> um, what I was saying is, is that I'm gonna try and dive in as quickly as possible because we have so many questions tonight. So I have a brief intro just as far as just some troubleshooting for social media and then I'm gonna get right to your questions. Like Megan said, she's got a chat box that her and Sarah are monitoring. So you guys can um, ask questions live, which I will um, respond to and then also answer ones that people submitted earlier. Um, just a little bit more background about me. I was the digital editor at Brava for about four years. Um, I teach social media classes and marketing classes for creatives all over the country at Portland State University, UW Writers Institute, and the Highlights Foundation, and a couple other places. But you guys didn't come to hear more about me. It can be your questions answered. So let's jump in. I'm going to share a screen with you. And this is kind of where this, we want to start tonight in regards to how do you, there were so many questions I got from everything as far as what are the best types of ads to be running on Facebook or Instagram, how to get started. This kind of basic outline will help you from uh, the get go. So you're gonna figure out what your objectives are with your social media platforms. That means whether you're on no platforms already or you're running like six of them. So you can do that in a number of different ways. You can do it based on quality of your content, like for people who are very strong in their visual creation game. So if you're a videographer, photographer, you know, you might wanna really hone on and making sure that your brand is really coming through in your visuals. That might be your primary area of focus to start with. For some people, it might be the quantity. How often are you posting? Me, I'm a big fan of this. When I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, I almost always Say, get your consistency down on every single platform and the beauty of social media is, is you get to determine what your consistency is so that same thing with e-newsletters some people send out their e-newsletter once a week three times a week some people do it once a month that all totally gets to be determined by you but I usually recommend and we'll get more into this probably later coming up with a what we call a social media strategy. How often are you gonna be posting on your platforms? And it could be two to three times a week on Instagram. It could be that you tweet every day. It could be that you're posting on LinkedIn once a week. But you wanna come up with a consistency and I recommend you stick with that for three to six months at least to start with. You can always scale up. So less is more in the beginning and then build out from there. 
That also is true in regards to the number of platforms you're trying to run at one time. Like I said, we'll probably get more into that later on down the road. The other thing, if you've been active on social media for a while and you're trying to start figuring out maybe how to monetize your social media activity in some way, or maybe your blog site or professional website, you might want to start looking into partnerships and promotions. That's, I put those two things last specifically because usually that's down the road somewhere. It's highly unusual for someone to jump in right off the bat within the first couple of months and start earning money or revenue in some way, shape or form, specifically just from like sponsored content on their social media pages or on their website or their blog. But that is something you can pursue once you scaled up. And we can talk more about that if you have specific questions on how to pursue those opportunities. And then remember that not every single piece of content that you create needs to be hitting all four of these or even two of these. Be very specific about the purpose. I mean, be intentional. I always say, always be intentional with why you're creating, what you're creating, and why you're sharing it. So a good best advice I've heard within the last two years about this is that instead of try, thinking that you're trying to create one piece of content to reach a thousand people at one time, think of it more as the sense that you're creating content to connect individually with a thousand different, you're basically trying to create a thousand different interactions. Does anybody have any specific questions related to that? I don't know if any questions came in while I was saying all that, Megan or Sarah, since I can't see the chat box. So just so everybody knows, I can't see the chat box. Okay, so then I'm gonna move on to the next slide then. The next slide is why I recommend these are some of the tools that you can use right now. I've got a blog post that I posted earlier today that Megan and Sarah will share with you at the end of the workshop. You'll get an email that links to it and there's way more resources than these. But these are some of the initial ones that I've like found in the last, I would say six months to a year that they're very useful. So Unsplash is a site that has free photos. You can, you can download up to 10 photographs free a day. Of course, like all platforms, all of these things, the reason I chose, let me back up for one moment, the reason I've chose all these specific, this six and the other ones you'll see in the blog post is that they all have some amount of free user access, what that looks like, right? And then most of them, of course, have paid versions that they want you to upgrade to, but not all of them do you really need to do that, especially in the beginning when you're first getting started. Unsplash is great. I've been, when I don't have time to take a high res photo or I don't have a photographer that I can tap right on hand, I use Unsplash and I've yet to start, I've been using it now for probably at least three years. I've yet to pay or upgrade to their business access version. 10 photos a day may not sound like a lot, but it really is. And you literally can search for everything. So imagine like if it was, I mean, it's crazy. Like, and the photos are all gorgeous. The other reason I really like Unsplash is, is that because Unsplash has already paid for the rights from each photographer. And by the way, this is a tip for photographers. Any photographers who are watching, you might want to start trying to see maybe you could sell your photography to Unsplash if you're ready to like, you know, give away the licensing to it. Because the um, you can then share and use those photos without having to give credit. Of course, it's always nice if you give credit, but you don't have to because technically Unsplash owns that content now. So I highly recommend Unsplash. And again, there are other sites you can access photos for, but that's why that's the one I um, typically recommend the most. Canva is my favorite. Um, I create everything in Canva and there's other amazing, you know, graphic creation tools, um, photo editing softwares. The thing I like about Canva is that you literally, I mean, um, templates, all their templates, are very easy to use. It's very user friendly. You, they have tutorials where you can teach yourself how to use it online. And again, I used like the platform for like two years before I ever upgraded to the business version. And that was just because I wanted to start using some of their pre-made graphics. So highly recommend Canva, every handout, every presentation. Um, they even now within the last couple months launched a function where you can create your own gifts inside of Canva. So um, check that out for sure. How to hey, Rachel? Oh yeah. Um, I just saw a comment in the in the chat box that they're only seeing four. Um, they're not seeing the Canva and the other ones that you're talking about right now. Oh, okay. Hold on for a second. Only the Twitter, Facebook, and um, those pieces. Oh, sorry, wrong. So, okay, we'll come back to that slide. Then hold on for a second. There we go. Can people see it now? I think you need to reshare your screen. I did, did I, I did, did anyone, did anyone, see? okay, one second. I just hit share, can you guys see it now? Um, I see, what I see right now is a double screen. Um, I see the Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram sort of in the foreground, and yep. behind that I can see, can you see this? 
That's that's much better. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Sorry, on mine. I'm seeing I'm seeing you guys on like the side tab. I got a lot of things open on my screen right now, so I apologize for that. Okay, because everyone can see it now. So there's on Splash this Canva. Anchor, for anybody who is trying to, sometimes they get asked, how do we embed audio files into our website? This is how what you use Anchor for. It's very, again, easy to use, figure out how to use. You can also use it if you wanna kind of test, anybody who's thinking about launching a podcast anytime soon, Anchor is a great um, software for that. And they have an app. And then Voxer is another one I recommend. So Anchor and Voxer, if you're looking at how to rip audio files that you can embed into other sites, or test podcasting. Medium is for the, all my writer friends, anybody who's watching who's a writer who wants to start blogging and you wanna start earning money off of your work, Medium's really fun because you can join without an access fee. And then again, you're always welcome to upgrade. But if enough people view your post on Medium, it's actually possible to earn money off of it. Now, granted, you're not going to start making thousands of dollars. Some writers do. Um, I think the most I've ever earned off of one of my posts so far is like a dollar thirty or something, pretty minimum. But the idea is, it's a great way to start engaging with other writers online. It's also a great resource for other um, marketing writing. I mean, food, culinary, I mean, people blog about all kinds of stuff on Medium. The other thing I really like about Medium is that it's not just for novices. There are people who have published books, they've won awards, they blog on Medium occasionally. So, and they also have a great newsletter kind of curation where they round up some of the best posts from the week. So it's a great place to network as well. So check out Medium if for anybody who's a writer who's watching, if you're not on it already, or if you're just looking for extra tips, um, hacks, Go to that too, as far as for social media, there's lots of resources on Medium. Powtoon's great for anyone who's thinking of animation. If you're trying to figure out how to dabble in animation, create animation, little, again, GIFs will work as well, but also little mini, like an um, infographic animation for your website, for your newsletter, for a presentation. You can create little mini clips for your social media pages as well. I have learned about how to use probably about 18 months ago and they just keep getting better and better with the amount of things that they allow people to do and play around with on their site for free. So big fan of Powtoon. And then of course, we're all using Zoom right now. I created this slide before um, the quarantine. <laughs> now I think everybody and their mother has probably been on Zoom maybe even once a week, day or a couple times a week. So I think we all know what Zoom is. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that one. And like I said, the blog link that Megan will send you, there's a lot more resources. I've got some stuff that talks about the newsletters um, and some social media optimal sizes for social media graphics. That's another big question. There's a link to a whole post about that that will tell you the ideal image size for Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So check that out later, or we can maybe get into that a little bit, maybe if people have specific questions too. So I'm gonna get rid of this screen since some people said they could only see. Now this slide, we'll get here real quick and then we'll start taking questions. So this slide I created is because I recommend, these are kind of the basic four now, I would say as far as social media platforms are concerned. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. I give you a little, I sum up why being on these is useful at this point from a promotional standpoint for your business or your brand and why a lot of people for their like, Twitter's a great example of this for there was probably a good like two year period where people kept saying that Twitter's dying Twitter's dying off no one's using Twitter anymore which was 100% not true it was just in certain niches the publishing industry really has never left Twitter sports has never left Twitter politics has never left Twitter and then that kind of carried it through that phase where a lot of the mainstream was trying like as far as was starting to fall of it for other reasons so I tell people if you're trying to keep on top of what's going on like if you have any sort of publishing aspirations whether that's for for your written work or your visual photographs, illustrations, graphics, Twitter's where you want to be at. And actually a few times a year, you'll have agents that will come on from publishing houses or from literary agents that will come on and they will actually ask people to send them their work. They'll just for a whole day, they call it like there's, so they have different threads that they have it for. So that's the place you want to be if you're trying to scale up what you're doing, your creative like endeavors in any way. Check out Twitter to make those connections. A lot of agents, and editors are highly active on Twitter. Facebook groups is really, I say, like another great networking tool. I'm not personally a huge fan of just because I feel like, you know, Facebook is oversaturated. We all know in various different ways, but from a networking standpoint, groups are super, super useful. I belong to everything from like mom professional groups on Facebook to writer professional groups. The other thing I really like about that is let's say 
your content is specifically geared to like a region. There's a lot of groups that are specifically, let's say Midwest creatives or Midwest makers, or, you know, you know, say like Wisconsin photographers. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can Google and, uh, and really connect with other people in your sector. So check that out if you're not already in those groups. I also love about those groups is the fact that a lot of times people will say, hey, I know this editor or I know this, you know, specific business person or corporation that is looking for someone with X, Y, and Z skill or their specialization. LinkedIn's another great place for that as well. LinkedIn was not user-friendly at all. The first five or six years it was around, it used to glitch a lot. That site has improved a lot. I know people who only use LinkedIn now for their professional social media platform. It's going getting busters. The other thing that's great about LinkedIn is that people really keep it pretty professional. So you don't get a lot of the other kind of trolling that it goes on at other sites. So if that's one of the things that kind of keeps you off of social media is that you don't want to be engaged in that type of negativity or harassment, then LinkedIn could definitely be the site for you. And then Instagram is great, of course, because if visuals are your game or you're trying to reach a younger audience, then that's where you want to go. Now, another great thing about Instagram is if you're still trying to actually work on leveling up your visual creation content, the nice thing is, is that you can post things on your story, just like on Facebook now, although I think I don't think as many people necessarily get on the Facebook story still as Instagram story, is that you can create something. It doesn't have to be the best photo or image, but you can still promote whatever it is that you're doing, and it's only around for 24 hours. Okay, so I know that I ran through a lot really, really quickly, but I want to leave as much time as possible for specific questions. So um, Megan or Sarah, can I ask if there's been any questions that were submitted when I was talking the first um, like 15 minutes or so? I haven't seen any questions pop up yet, but if people are wanting to, now would be a great time to do that. Um, so okay. yeah, we haven't seen any um, pop up, but we certainly do have some um, maybe we can start with one, Rachel, of the questions that came in ahead of time, and that might spark people off uh, to be able to brave the uh, posting. If you are concerned about posting to the whole group, at the bottom of the chat box, you can choose to directly message one of us. So if you want to send it just directly to um, myself, uh, you could do that as well, um, or to Sarah. Um, on there that way you could um if you want to be more private about your uh question you can do it that way as well can everyone see the seven to 30 day self challenge box that i just shared i can see it on my screen perfect okay if anybody can't see it definitely <laughs> flag us and let us know. So the seven to 30 day self challenge, a lot of times, oh, I think someone actually asked this question is like, how do I get started? What do I post? Sometimes people like, they say they run out of ideas. These are great things to kind of just things you overheard is hilarious. I mean, it literally can just be, that works really well for tweets. It also works really well on Instagram. You literally could just create like a graphic with a quote on it or a half of a sentence as a teaser and then go into like a longer caption. If it's humorous, it can just kind of stand alone and throw in a hashtag or two. People get really, a lot of questions that I want to back up. Someone said something about how they don't know how to use hashtags. People get really obsessed about the hashtags. It's okay. You don't actually have to use hashtags. The whole point of hashtags is to make your content more searchable. The only site I've only really consistently seen it um, work on is Instagram. Facebook hashtags were around for a while. They've kind of fallen off. People don't really use them. You can use them on LinkedIn. I think they limit you to five um, as far as in regards to like really helping it like get your post showing up on other people's feeds possibly that you're not connected to. You can also use it on Twitter. With Twitter, all I say is on the sidebar, it usually tells you what hashtags are trending for the day on Twitter. So I would say if your whatever tweet you're sharing directly connects to something that's trending, go ahead and use it. Or if, again, you're trying to get a specific group of people, like you'd say, hashtag artist, hashtag Madison, Wisconsin, you know, those are things where being very specific on Twitter, just making, but if you don't use hashtags, it's totally fine too. Instagram, it definitely does help make your content more searchable. However, the algorithms are always changing. So about two years ago, the big thing was, is that, okay, they were telling everybody to use 30 or more hashtags in order to really get your post like trending on Twitter. Then with the, about nine, six months ago, it scaled back and it was like, okay, you don't want to be using more than five or six hashtags in your caption. Now the trend is, is like, okay, put a few hashtags in your caption and then make sure you're the first person to comment on your own post and then put more hashtags, the searchable hashtags you want to use there. Personally, I say, 
Don't spend a lot of time sweating this kind of stuff. If you're going to use a hashtag and also make sure on Instagram, you're not always using the ones where it says that like a million people have used a specific hashtag because that means your post is just getting buried. And also it's like, you know, so instead of saying, let's say fitness inspiration, maybe you want to say my fit day, you know, find something that less people are using so that you have more chances of your content being seen. So, but going back to, sorry, I segued because I wanted to ask, I know hashtags was a question and I wanted to make sure I answered that. So the seven to 30 day challenge, these are just ways to kind of get yourself going into a habit of posting. Like I said, you're going to come up with your consistency. Is. So let's say that you want to post two to three times a week on Instagram. Maybe you say, okay, for a month, all of my posts are going to be about what I ate. If your content is culinary or food related, maybe it's, if it's fashion, maybe it's about what you wore or maybe it's just for a week, maybe. And then you tag other people in order to get that kind of cross engagement going, tag other people that you follow or maybe some of your friends. So hopefully they'll start playing on it. You've seen that a lot during quarantine on Instagram stories for the people who are on Instagram and active about the fitness challenges. You know, it's like 15 day challenge you've seen, or it's like the push up challenge, the plank challenge. Um, yeah, some really crazy things um, that have been going on. The dance, there's a, well, that was a crazy dad. The TikTok thing that's going on. Some people that's moved off of TikTok and they put that on Instagram too or on Facebook as well. So those are just different ideas. Flashbacks or memories make great posts. That's one thing I will say I really do like about Facebook. And since Facebook purchased Instagram about a year, 18 months ago, now sometimes you'll get the post on um, Instagram too, like the little prompt, like, hey, you posted this a year ago, or you posted this two months ago, or this is your friend anniversary. Those are really easy. You literally just push a button. They already have it set up for you. You just push a button and bam, that's your post for the day. And then friendships, I always recommend as much as possible. Granted, you don't want to over be tagging the same people over and over again because you don't want to totally annoy like your professional acquaintances or friends. But as much as possible, try and engage with people. People say, how do I grow engagement? And then usually I ask, well, who are you engaging with online? They're like, well, not that many people or just my family. So you got to go out and find people to connect with. Maybe it's other foodies. Maybe it's other writers. Maybe it's other people who you know live in your town. Again, I always write, pick a, an audience. Your audience can evolve. Your audience can grow. But it always, you should always have a very clear idea of who you're trying to talk with on social media. And again, on every single post, it doesn't need to always be the same group. You can rotate from week to week, day to day, but you should always have a very clear idea in mind. And current marketing classes like at UW, you know, they'll say, they tell students like, for who are studying this, they'll say, okay, you have to actually create an avatar. Like current marketing, like education tells people, you literally want to create a persona of who your ideal audience is now that could be and that could be five different people you come up with a name for them you come up with how old they are so it's something like this is becky she's 45 she's a part-time stay-at-home mom in her spare time she likes to hike run cook i mean they literally have to do this to that degree because they want you to really dial in that specifically to who you're trying because again if you're trying to reach somebody who's 45, that's going to look very different than someone who's 25, potentially. What gender are they? Where do they live? What are their interests? So really think it through as you're trying to create your brand content and also what platforms you're on. Don't trace the trends. You know, if you're not on TikTok, don't get on TikTok just because it's super popular right now, especially if you're having problems keeping up with the platforms you're already on. And if you're not using the platforms you're already on, then get rid of them. So I am a big believer in this. When I started at Talies and I did the same thing when I worked at Brava, I do this when I get hired by clients, nine times out of 10, first thing I do as far as cleaning house in regards to their social media is start deleting platforms or start putting them. You can always deactivate them. You don't necessarily have to cancel your membership. You can always deactivate every platform just so it's no longer visible to anybody but you in case you log in. Because especially if you're trying to, get like corporate clients or sell your work on like a higher scale. Somebody posted about having exhibitions and like, hey, people aren't showing up to this. You wanna look like whatever you're doing online is meaningful and engaging to people in some way. So if you've got these platforms sitting out there that you haven't posted on in like three months, and that, or no one has ever engaged with in any way, or you have like 17 followers on, that's not helping you. That's not doing you any favors. Now, granted, if it's a newer site, that's not a big deal. People realize, okay, it's going to take time to grow. But if you've been around, if that site's existed for like five years and there's not a whole lot going on, then I would say you're better off deactivating it or canceling it all together and then restarting it at some point if you think that site might be useful to you in some way. 
Uh, Rachel, we did have a couple questions come through private on the private side. So I'm glad that people felt comfortable in, in engaging that way. Um, so one of the questions that we had come through was, um, do you recommend creating a website or just starting a blog via Medium, for example, or just starting an Instagram account? What is the benefit of having both an app or a website. That's so my question for that person would be, what are they, I'd be curious to know, what are they trying to promote? So is it a website for their art? Is it a website as far as visual art? Is it a writer? Because if it was a writer, then I would say, if you're trying to, especially um, promote yourself as a freelance writer, I would say probably creating outside on Medium and start blog, but again, do that. But before you do that, let me take a step back. Make sure you have at least three months worth of content or two months worth, depending on how often you want to post. If you're thinking you'll be posting once a month, then you would have two blog posts. I'm moving. Oh, I keep muting you. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I do want to just mention quick. It looks like a major a number of our um, participants today are visual artists. I'm not saying that all of you are, but when I look around and I see faces, many of them are visual artists, but they might have aspirations to also have some of that written content, but just uh, looking over, the, we have a little bit of um, theater involved as well, um, but just wanted to kind of identify who's out here, but that may not be everybody. Okay, no, that's great, no. I mute myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, thank you for that, Megan, that's helpful. Okay, so, and then, and then I also would say, if you're mostly visual artists, the medium may not be, and you're not gonna be having that much written content. I'm not saying not to use medium, but I would then say for sure, then let's go with a social media platform to start. I would say Instagram. And then another site you might wanna work, um, look at that might be more to your benefit, depending on what type of visual art you're creating, rather than medium would be Tumblr. When I first started blogging and freelance writing, like, oh gosh, eight, nine years ago now, Tumblr was, the blog that I use. Again, it's very user-friendly like Medium is. The other thing I really like about Tumblr, Tumblr is that you can, they make it so easy so that if you upload something to the site, you specifically tell it, it's a blog post, it's an image. Like you, and they have different formats, but they do it all for you. And then you also can then, when you're done uploading whatever the post is, you can tell it what social media platforms you want it to share onto. So you can instantly cross share it to all the platform, social media platforms you have connected to your Tumblr account. So you don't have to connect those things, but you can choose to. So when people say, how do I save time? That's a huge sa time saving measure. The other thing is, is that it doesn't just blanketly um, share it like the same word. It like changes the caption and the sizing. Like it literally does everything for you um, almost like perfectly. So Tumblr would be the site also I'd recommend checking out too if you're mostly a visual artist. So I would say start an Instagram account if you don't already have one and then look at maybe getting on Tumblr and then also check out the other artists that are already on Tumblr like graphic artists and illustrators are really, really big on Tumblr. Tumblr is not a great place if you're trying to engage with other artists in the Midwest. I will say it never really took off here in the Midwest, but there's a lot of folks out on the coast. So if you're open to working and networking with other people like in New York and LA area, then again, Tumblr is a great site. Excellent. I did see that someone posted too that they are writers. So we do have writers in our group. So we want to make sure we acknowledge them, uh, those talented individuals that are out there. So thank you for messaging that. That really helps uh, Rachel target who she's talking to. So we really want to make this as helpful for you guys. So we do have a couple other, another question here. Um, I'm going to hit them, two of them. Uh, the one question is, how do you use uh, social media to drive the purchase of your art? Like really get people to know this isn't just to enjoy and look at and it's pretty and all, but like really turn sales. Um, I think that's especially right now, very important to people. Um, and I guess that kind of tags a little bit with um, how do you reach people organically on Facebook? Okay, so reaching people organically on Facebook is the same as reaching people organically on all sites. The number one thing that messes up people's organic reach is not having that consistency of when you're posting. Like I, I can tell you before I, I let anyone spend money on advertising, that's always the first thing. If you're not posting consistently already on your platforms, you don't wanna spend any money on ads. That is the number one thing you can do to improve your reach in every single platform is get a consistent post schedule down. 
and then do that again for at least three to six months and then reassess. Um, P.Y., I know one question someone had sent in ahead of time was like, what's the benefit of having a business page versus like your personal page? Again, on Facebook, that's kind of up to you. I'm all about, if you're already connected to a ton of people on your personal page, I would recommend starting off, you just keep posting on there because, you know, it's not like your followers, they don't just automatically transition onto this professional page you just launched. So then you've added another step to what you're trying to do. You're trying to promote your work, but now you have to create, you have to promote this new Facebook page you just created, right? So, and that like, so that's not helping you in the beginning. If you want to go down that road at some point, that's fine. Instagram, the nice thing is, is at any point you can go inside the settings and just flip your Instagram account to it being a bit from a personal Instagram to a professional, to a business, you know, Instagram account. Now, the benefit to that is that then you can start tracking, it starts tracking your analytics. So you can start to see what time of day most people are engaging with your content at. You can see the demographics in regards to age, you know, as far as gender, is it mostly men or women viewing your post and where they live. And so again, regionally, so you get all that information. So I would say on, if you're gonna like pull the switch on a business versus a professional page, I would encourage you if you're on Instagram to make that professional before I would launch a totally separate new page on Facebook if you're on there for your business or your brand. For people who are more established and who are already been doing this, you're in the game for a while, and like you're saying, you're just really now trying to drive sales, then I would recommend advertising. But before you do that, you need to learn some terminology or some lingo. So I'm gonna share another screen here with you guys um, so that you can see in the blog post that Megan and Sarah will share you a link to at the end of this. I also connect with a Facebook and Instagram ad consultants, a YouTube page. She has, her name is like Claire and I'm gonna butcher her last name, but it's like Peltra is French. I do not, I'm, that is not how you say it, <laughs> but she's an amazing professional and she has tons of free videos on YouTube and on her website that kind of are these quick just tutorials to help you get um, more familiar with some of this lingo. But this is also just if you guys can everybody see the analytics and ads? I, is it showing up on your screen? I see it on my screen. So okay, I'm going to awesome. see, see, else can see, see it. Other <laughs> so and these are these are just and I and I do want to say and I give you um, a website link there that can show you where you can go learn some more terminology as well. But those, these are like the like five or six basic ones I recommend you start with understanding before you start spending any money on Facebook or Instagram that or really ads anywhere, LinkedIn, Twitter. And also be mindful of the fact that like, okay, so Facebook and Instagram, because Facebook again owns Instagram, you those things um, function pretty much similarly. Twitter and LinkedIn, you purchase advertising on their, their sites, they function a little bit different. So make sure you do your homework. Same thing before you hire someone else. Another reason I also recommend getting more familiar with terminology is because sometimes you're just like, hey, I'm overloaded, I can't handle all this, or you have the budget to pay to have someone else do your social media for you or help out with this in some way, shape or form. Again, you wanna make sure you know what they're talking about. A lot of people try to fake it, but it's pretty quick when you realize people are over their head and they don't really understand what's going on. You also won't really be able to understand the metrics that you're getting kicked back from your advertising if you don't understand what some of this terminology is. So B2B is business to business, B2C is business to consumer. You know, again, even just things that are as simple as that, like somebody like me takes for granted, there's a lot of people who are maybe even watching this right now who have no idea what those things stand for. So it definitely pays off in the long run to do some homework before you start paying for ads. So my guess is if you have been, and, and don't boost posts on Facebook, do the legwork. I recently, a webinar I watched, um, this person was recommending, which I think is a great idea, is that create five different ads when you first get started for, let's say, the same program or for the same, let's say, you're driving people to your same photography website. And then do the work to then go back and like, let's say have the ads run for a week or three days, whatever's in your budget, at least three days, but up, up, you know, a week if you can you know, keep it and it's not gonna break the bank. And then see which one got the most views, which one did people actually click the most on your website through, but kind of do some testing in that way, shape or form. But be frugal in the beginning. I mean, even people who are very, very good at this and very savvy will tell you that they, I mean, you could spend $10,000 alone just launching your business on social media, in, um, on social media advertising. I don't have an extra $10,000 to spend on advertising. I don't think necessarily a lot of people do right off the gate. So just be mindful that's why I'm saying don't mess around with boosting posts because that's not doing you a whole lot of good most of the time. 
Another question, Megan? Um, I didn't see another question in coming, but I'm curious, do you know what dark post is? What dark post? Dark post? Yeah, so those are posts that like you can't like see. Um, sorry, your dark post. So you're gonna, I should say that they're not just visible to anyone. You know, I'm like, does that make sense? So you're basically, you're very, very much targeting a specific audience, like audience. That is helpful. Yes. Um, and if, if anybody wants, I have, so for a class that I, that I was like pulling a syllabus together for last year, I created like a guide of social media terms that specifically most of them related to advertising. It has like almost 70 terms in it with the actual definitions. So if anybody wants that, they're welcome to message me or message Megan or Sarah and I will send it to you. So I mean, it will save you a little bit of legwork. It's, it's even alphabetized. Um, it would took a lot of time to compile it, but I did do that <laughs> for a syllabus. But I've stopped just giving it to people because I feel like people get really overwhelmed if they open this like PDF that's like six pages long if they're just getting started. But you're welcome to request it from me and I will forward it on to you. <laughs> Excellent. Um, can you give a few more tips, maybe um, outside of advertising, but some other key tips in um, potentially turning sales? Do you have any other um, pieces that you might be able to touch on that? Um, yeah. That so, I, yeah, collaborations are huge for that. You know, one of the best things, like I'd say, um, that's what I do. I mean, collaborate as much as possible. Try to like, you know, there's force and numbers. So if there's a way to partner with what you're doing, whether that means cross promotion, like you kind of agree, hey, I'm gonna share your stuff for a week if you share my stuff for a week for people you're already connected to, but think outside of the box too. I think a lot of times people get really siloed in their sectors and they forget like, you know, hey, your tech friends, they work for entities that purchase art. They need art. <laughs> and so if you're working on new stuff, I would let them know. That's another big reason why LinkedIn is so great because you have people who are connected across all different types of sectors. And I mean, most of the bigger clients I've gotten from a freelance writing standpoint, just within the last two years, have all come with basically professional connections on LinkedIn because people, you know, we're all so busy nowadays. You know, like obviously life looks a little bit different now in quarantine, but in our day-to-day -day lives normally, we're also busy. Things are moving so quickly. You know, so Someone else that may be in a totally different state or city from you, they're talking to somebody, they're networking, and someone's like, oh, I, I need a writer or I need a photographer. They don't even, they think, oh, wait a minute, I know a writer. And they're like, they don't even find out. I have one person who recommended me to write a, a diversity and tech uh, guide or diversity and inclusion guide for a tech company. Cause they're like, they said they needed a writer. And I was like, I don't know if she does this kind of stuff, but I know a writer. People do that kind of stuff all the time and they just connect you. So I would say definitely share, share, share. This is one of the reasons you have to get comfortable with promoting yourself and promoting your own work is because the more no one can, word of mouth is still the best advertising. I worked in the media for four years and I guarantee you word of mouth is still the best advertising. And so social media is essentially just the modern form of word of mouth, right? So you want to get as much, many people aware of what you do because a lot of people sometimes just have no idea what you're doing. They, or maybe they, last time they saw some of your work was four years ago. They don't know that you've evolved. They don't know that now you're doing okay now your your sketches have evolved into like life-size paintings or now that you're doing illustrations or you're doing printmaking you know there's you know so be made very as much as possible try and show the diversity of what you're doing and what you're willing to do if you're open to commissions I would absolutely make sure that you are posting about that at least once a month because not everybody necessarily wants you know whatever it is that you're already doing but there's a lot of people who want somebody to custom make something for them that's that's really helpful do you um suggest joining groups that might be say developer groups or interior design groups um, if you're not an interior designer or a developer, but you want to share your information with them, what do you think about joining groups or trying to get involved with those types of, of groups of people when you're not necessarily fitting the bill, but you might have something to offer them? I think you can. I would say if anybody, so what I would recommend for that is, is kind of coming at it from the back door end of it. So if you have, let's say you have a client um, who has already purchased work from you and it's in their living room. Like, let's say you know for sure these people have this in their living room or they have this in their office. I would kind of poke them and say, hey, at some point, would you be willing to take a picture and post this on your Facebook page? Or would you be willing to give this picture to me and let me share it? Most of the time, I would say most, especially nowadays, 
most people would probably say yes, as long as their room is cleaned up, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it doesn't make, yeah. So I would say, and especially if you're not necessarily gonna tag them specifically, because I think the more people can see your work in real life, like, oh my gosh, that looks so beautiful on my wall, or I love those colors, or that just, oh, that's what my office is missing. I think that that is a way to come at that from the back end. I have no, I have um, some clients last year, I was helping with their website, and they are, art dealers essentially like they they they're art agents they rep artists and that was their big thing was like they wanted people to see from their website that our art is functional like we've got everything from people who are painting skateboard decks to you know who are doing these amazing you know commission murals and that they wanted people this was all about so what's one of the things that we did straight away was when we asked the artists for their that they represent for their bios we asked them to send us visuals of their art either while they were in the process of creating it that's another huge thing People love to see how you make your work. So if you can start showing some of the behind the scenes stuff on your social media page or on your website, that kind of stuff also makes great blog content. People love that as well. It makes it, they need that personal connection. But then the other, or so show, show us behind the scenes of you making the work or show us the stuff that's sold in an actual real location. This is how this looks now. Yeah, I saw that with a, an artist uh, post on Facebook and I actually went up to her afterwards and said, you know, that was an awesome post because it really showed people, gave them an understanding of what that, oh, this could be my house. This is a house out in the hills in Hollywood. This is like someone's house, um, you know? So I think that's a really great um, example. And the getting messy piece, you know, people want to see, see that you're absolutely right. So I think that's excellent suggestions. Um, I do have another, looks like another, message that one thing that I, I want to say at the end of that though is like you know so a great person who does that who does a great job of that locally is emily balsley she is on instagram follow her look her up she does a great job of that as far as showing what her work looks like in real spaces everything from the downtown library so i mean she just painted her bathroom in her house recently and the thing i love about it is is that every picture is obviously somewhat different you definitely get to see like the versatility of her portfolio but also you know, it's always very colorful. Like I know her work when I see it. So she does a great job of that. If someone just needs like an actual example to reference what Megan and I were just talking about, that's one person I would suggest looking up on Instagram. That is awesome. Um, yeah, I did see, uh, yeah, using other people for inspiration. Um, and I like the idea of potentially using some of your stories about where that work came from on blog posts or things like that. Like, don't be afraid to tell your story. You know, that's a lot of times what people sell that sells the art is that people want to hear your story. They love the captions. Um, so we had two more questions that came in. We have about 15 minutes left. Okay. Uh, one of them was uh, what kind of posts should be put on LinkedIn? Um, and then uh, another, the second question is about COVID. So let's touch on the, what types of posts should be on LinkedIn? Um, and they, somebody did ask for Emily's last name. Could you say it slowly and spell it maybe so they could Yeah, hold on. I, I'm not going to butcher her. I'm going to look, I'm going to make sure I'm going to look and I'm going to Google it here real quick because I'm not, I don't want to mispronounce her last name. Um, or actually let me, let's see. I'm going to just, I want to make sure I, yep. And no, my daughter's like, it is Balsley, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Downstairs. That's literally, I was like, no, I, I know it is, honey. That, thank you. So this is how... No, I, I'm, I got it. I got it. <laughs> it's be, this we is love the life. background support. This is my real life happening in the moment right now. <laughs> so it's B-A-L-S-L-E-Y. And her um, website, if you wanted to check out that too, is Emily Balsley. So B again, B-A-L-S-L-E-Y.com. So that's her website, but then she's also on Instagram. But you can, you can, I'm sure she's, she's linked that to that on her um, website too. So. Okay. And then someone had asked about an Etsy oh, shop question. It. Etsy is another great place. So I know you said visual artists. I know I kind of went off on a tangent about writing for a while. So again, for visual artists, Etsy is another great place to use, like in place of having like a professional website. Um, I get into this a little bit in my, in the blog post, you guys will get a link to later, but LinkedIn, someone's saying, what kind of posts should I be taking on LinkedIn? Anything that's professional that you're doing, I would be showing that is the place to really talk about. So if it's a blog post, you can show a picture of in progress work. You could give a shout out. Another great thing people love about on LinkedIn is showing things that are giving you inspiration. So if there are articles that you're reading about like 
how to sell art or the struggle that artists are having in day to day, whether it's in COVID or pre-COVID or after COVID, those types of, you want to make people feel like, and let them know that not only are you engaged in what you're doing, but you're engaged with the art scene. So any content, whether it's something you created yourself or something you found that's really useful for you is totally a hundred percent fair game to share on LinkedIn because you can share an article, but you can also just share like a general post. And the nice thing about it is, is that LinkedIn is one of those sites that actually will just, you don't even always have to have a visual yourself to go with it because if you're sharing it to like a link to a different website, it's hyperlinked. So it'll pull the image for you. So again, that's one of those time saving things sometimes too. Awesome. Well, I think the, uh, the next question is very timely. Okay. Uh, with COVID-19, what do you see happening as it relates to using social media to promote your art? I think this is a great time to promote your art. I think people are looking for a reason to smile. I think people are looking for a reason to just to feel like normal life is continuing. Um, a lot of people are redecorating. I mean, I live in downtown Madison and I mean, literally it's like any house that in or space that is, um, privately owned and not like a big leasing company, people are in the process of remodeling. The people with the house on the corner for me, I mean, literally every day, if they're not planting flowers, that tonight we walked down with our foster dog and they were staining their benches or their post or their porch. I mean, anything and everything. People are just trying to pass the time. And again, finances are limited, but another great thing that you could do would be as an artist would be to just to kind of generate some ish, um, interest and to help parents out would be to create like, sketch like if you're if you sketch it all just create coloring sheets what a great free thing that you could just one or two of those and post them online on facebook or linkedin and that's a great way to drive traffic to your site and again coming at it from the back door maybe somebody who hasn't heard of you or even just like a mini photography lesson i know i'm always trying to find a way to level to like boost up my like food photography game or my Instagram game. So if you're a photographer, those mini micro lessons where it's like, Hey, this is how to take better photos in natural light. Boom. Like just, you know, say you're going to do like a 30 minute Facebook live about that one day. So there's a lot of different ways to promote yourself right now in COVID because more people are online now than before. And people are just looking for positive things to do. I love that idea of showing people um, a little bit into your um, work because everybody on this call is a professional artist in whatever discipline they're in. Um, and I want to encourage you all that are listening and, and being part of this is to own that. Own your, your talents and own your professionalism and make sure you share it and just share those talents. You know, just little snippets. You don't have to give too much. Um, but I think that's awesome. Really great suggestions. Um, we don't have any other. Oh, Somebody just popped in a question. Good. Good job. <laughs> um, what would you, uh, would you recommend uh, using ITTT to post from a platform, one platform to another? And I might need a little translation because I don't know what ITTT stands for. I was going to say, I don't know if I do either. <laughs> I'm like, and I love about the, the, uh, the, uh, the acronyms. You said ITT. It looks like I with three T's. I T T T. <laughs> uh, I T T. Oh, if this, then that. Oh, that was some great LOL type. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? All right. So now I need you to say the question again. <laughs> I can. I can. Hold on one second. Let me just scroll down a little bit so I can get the whole thing. Um, Thanks oh, for the link, Sarah. <laughs> would you recommend? that we use if this then that to post from one platform to another so what i i am personally so this is one of those comfort level things i personally am not because my life and what i do professionally so much lives online i'm online pre-covid and during covid i mean if i'm awake and i'm not going to the bathroom you know or in the shower i'm online i'm plugged in in some way shape or form whether my computer or on my phone but so for me, social media management tools don't really aren't time saving mechanisms for me in regards to, but however, if you know that, look, I can't be logging into Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, LinkedIn every day to check or respond to people's comments, you know, likes, whatever it is, 
then, or just to kind of keep tabs on what's going on, I, I do recommend social media management tools, but it's a comfort level thing. Not all of them are very user friendly. Hootsuite's gotten a lot better. I'm a big fan of Planoly for people who, again, the visual artists out there. The thing I really like about Planoly is that you can literally, it's a visual map of your, of your grid of the plan. And I provide a link to that too, I think in the blog post as well. But in there, Sarah can also maybe pull one too and put it in the chat box if people wanna see what I'm talking about right now if you haven't heard of Planoly. So that's probably the social media management tool I would recommend personally, just from comfort level. And again, it's very user friendly, but there's Meet Edgar is really nice. They're consultants. Um, again, they're trying to make money off of you in some way, shape, or form. But again, you can start using their software for free. They also have a blog site where they post, they replenish pretty frequently as far as if you're trying to keep tabs on some of the most um, trending kind of social media things that are happening. The other thing I like about me, Edgar, is again, they kind of do what Tumblr does, that if you use there, that it'll go ahead and convert it whatever your post is so that it fits perfectly all the different, the various social media platforms you have it connected to. So there's lots of different tools out there. Like I said, it's not my favorite thing, but again, I have to be online all the time anyway for work. That's not true for everyone. So if you're the kind of person that ha that is willing to block off, let's say one or two days a month to plan out all of your social media content for 30 days and then just all upload it to like a social media management site that I a hundred percent encourage you to look into some of these tools. Oh, excuse me. It's okay. Oh, excuse me. Um, so I felt that coming. Um, that is really helpful. And Sarah did drop those in the comment box and we'll make sure that those are grabbed um, as well. Um, I don't see any other questions. Does anybody else have anything burning right now? We got about seven minutes left. Wanna make sure we use the most of it. And then I have a couple um, of little announcements before we sign off. So. I have, I have one more screen I just shared that I never did get a chance to share. People want to look at that before we wrap up. Um, can you see this, Megan? Okay. So this is about, and I just, these again, just more resources, things to look at. Some of them we already mentioned. After COVID is over, I highly recommend locally for anybody who's here, hopefully like in Dane County, which I assume most of you are, checking out Social Media Breakfast, although they've moved a lot of their content online since COVID. So um, check it out. Usually it's on a Wednesday morning. I'm not sure exactly when they're posting things or doing things now, but I know they are having virtual meetups. LinkedIn Local X is another great event. I was really impressed um, when I was at one last year because they do this cool thing that at some point they tell everybody who has the LinkedIn app, when you're at the event, if they'll tell you at some point to go to open the app on your phone and it instantly connects you on LinkedIn to every single person in the room. So instead of trying to connect, grab business cards, you're automatically synced in with all these different people. And I was very impressed with the different people from different sectors and ages and demographics that was there. So it was a very diverse meetup. So I they, they happen you typically about quarterly, I think. So I highly recommend that. Some of the top two are books. And then for people who uh, want to get more involved with and learn more about SEO, Google Trends, Keywords Everywhere, I recommend those sites and those resources online. And then we already talked about Canva, Unsplash, and Powtoons. And I have a little write-up here about micro-influencing because I think sometimes people start to feel a little discouraged because they don't have like, you know, 5,000 followers or 15,000 followers on their different pages. And just remember that social media really only works if people really feel authentically connected to you. And so even brands now sometimes more likely will want to partner with somebody that has 500 followers or a thousand followers if they see that you have higher engagement. Because a lot of times people have like 150,000 followers, but they're only getting like a hundred likes. So that's like barely 1% out of the followers that they have versus somebody else who might have 700 followers, but they're getting like, you know, 50 or 100 likes on their posts, they have a way higher engagement and they can tell that their audience is, is more real. And so they're more likely to want to work with you than somebody. So again, micro influencing is definitely, um, it's not a joke. <laughs> it's a real thing. That is awesome. Um, you've really given some amazing uh, tangible things and tools that people can use uh, as, they, as they move out there in the world. Um, and don't forget to invite us to like your pages. Uh, you know, if you catch some of the names on the people out here, you know, we can um, always check out your stuff too. Um, I'm gonna give one last call. We got about four minutes left for any questions. I do wanna save like maybe the last minute for announcements, but I wanna give one last call. <clears throat> if you have a burning question, now is your chance to get it out there. 
Yeah. And you're always welcome to send me a DM at some point too. I can't promise I'll have the answer, but I, I'm not Mo means. There's so many things out there and different ways to come at this, but I'm always happy to at least give you a resource to look into, um, even if I don't have like the answer for you in that moment. And we'll make sure we uh, share Rachel's handles so you can find her on social media, follow her blogs and um, all of her content, absolutely. Um, well, I'm gonna give a couple quick announcements since if one more question comes in, Rachel's still here. So, um, I sorry, I just saw one more. Um, uh, yes, the question just that came in was, um, will the stuff be shared because uh, they weren't able to um, be here at the beginning? Yes, that stuff. We will share links, content, some screenshots. <clears throat> Rachel got us all hooked up with some great stuff, so that will be coming. Um, so there's two quick announcements that I want to give before we uh, move forward and some shameless plugs for Dane Arts. Uh, you can find um, keep up to date on our uh, workshop series that's growing. You can visit dabblemarket.com uh, and we'll have a list of workshops up there. You can also find them at danearts.com, that website as well. Dane Arts is the hub, so we want to make sure you're checking that out because Without them, we would not be here. Um, we want to announce that our workshop Wednesdays will take place every other Wednesday at this point. Um, so our next one will be on the 20th of May. It's uh, Dapper Dane Arts Professional Arts Registry. So if you are a professional artist, which most of you are, if not all of you, um, you will want to check this out. So this launch is specifically for artists. It's an artist registry, a way for you to get linked in with this uh, arts community. It will then, after we have it uploaded, we can upload content um, and it's produced by Birdwell Solutions. It's a group of young uh, up and coming developers and they have partnered with Dane Arts to create this platform specifically for artists and also to help you turn sales. It's to get your content out there so people can see it and they can make purchases. It will have an e-commerce feature. If you write a book, it's a place to sell your book. It's really, really, really exciting. So they're gonna do the launch for artists to give you information and help you get your content up there, help you create, uh, you know, facilitate that. You'll have a lot of autonomy that you can change content, you can add content, um, and it will be, um, facilitated through that platform um, and then those direct sales to you. Um, and then we'll do a, a, a very large launch to the greater community once we have a solid group of artists on there. We wanna have a great amount of content so when those uh, buyers come in, they have a lot of, they're not overwhelmed, but they have a lot of great information um, and a lot of great contacts. So you'll wanna check that out. Um, I also don't want to forget to mention that you should sign up for the Dane Arts newsletter. You can do that through the um, danearts.com website. Um, and there is some really exciting information coming out soon. So you want to pin that and make sure you check it out. Um, there's some information related to Dang. If you're not familiar with that, that's a granting opportunity that the county put out. So uh, you really want to check that out. Um, it's the Dane Arts Needs Grants for independent working artists in all disciplines. All right, so make sure you pin that. I don't want, I can't stress that enough. Um, so uh, I guess I didn't mention our times. Our time will always be from 7, 8, uh, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And I see a bunch of other questions that came through, but we are at eight o'clock. Um, we did post a survey link, so make sure you do that because we want to gather your information. If you think you would be a good presenter or you know somebody that would be, make sure you let us know. We do pay our presenters we ask you to do that work for free. And nor should you uh, say yes necessarily if someone asks you to do your work for free. Own your talent, own your time, and um, let's communicate that to the public that you know you are professionals and you should be paid for your time. Um, I am going to leave, uh, leave it with that. So Rachel, I want to say thank you again so much for your time. Thank you, Sarah, for managing the chat box and helping us post a lot of those links. Thank you all for attending. You attended our launch with us. We really hope this is beneficial to you. 
and we want to continue to help you grow your skills as an artist um, because that just gives me chills and I'm uh, of pride to watch you all be successful. So we'll be looking for you online and we will see you again soon. Thank you everybody so much for joining us. Bye everybody.